Uh, website is www.thefriendship.com. www.thefriendship.com. Greater. Greater. Greater friendship. I'm so sorry. www.thegreaterfriendship.com. Once again, www.thegreaterfriendship.com. Is that right? Praise the Lord. Is that right? Uh, my little grandson back there will keep me straight. He'll tell me, Paul, Paul, write it down. Write it down, Paul, Paul. Write it down. You have it. I got it, baby. I got it. I got to go down.
have a lot to praise the Lord about. Amen. God is waiting on us to give him the praise. Praise that he so rightly, so rightly deserves. We just cannot give him enough praise. But he needs it. Praise the Lord. We need to give it to him. Praise the Lord. He's worthy. He's worthy. Worthy. All of our praise. God is so worthy. We dare not leave this place without giving God some praise that he deserves. Because we have been kept by the grace Oh God, so wherever you are in your automobiles, in your home, sitting on your couch, in your place of worship, don't forget to give God praise. Everything that has breath ought to praise the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, 150 songs. Praise Him, Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in the corner of His power. Praise Him for His mighty act. Praise Him according to the excellent great. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with the partial of the horn. Now, everything we do is for praise God. And God is good and he must. Now, I have never told this song that when I was uh, back in 49, back then, y'all don't even know about We had summer school and we turned out to pick cotton. But the last day of summer school, I weighed. 210 pounds. And I played with the big boy. I took sick at school. And I got home. I was down for three weeks. I don't know what was wrong. But I got down to 175 pounds. And the doctor would come every other day. Wouldn't be too long for the doctor to call. But he'd come late in the evening. He'd stay all night. And uh, it was three weeks before I could, my mother and dad had turned me like a kid. And when uh, I got over it, they got me up to walk. I couldn't walk. They had to help me walk. Then when I was 16, we never told my brother, and I never told him, but we was hunting. We got on the bridge, and I got tired. I was sitting on the then over the creek they built over with the bridge. I was sitting on that bridge like this, and he was coming back. Forgot to put the safe on his gun. He went off, shot right on my own. Then he picked eight, and I was up here, and I uh. We couldn't hang, and I, I was, we had got through. And Earl and Lewis and them, they was all in front of me, and I had me a pump drill. I just slowed those old tractor down. Don't take me a drink of water, still stop. And he had the pump right up, and run in the ditch and throw me off. And half of my feet, got left feet got hung in that uh, stone wheel, cut it into the bank. And I uh, choked it out. That back wheel was touching my shoulder. And y'all know about back in the 75, coming down that hill, we had been to the wash. And the fellow got away from the police and coming up. I got over as far as I could to keep from getting in the ditch. He come up that hill with his girlfriend, then I drank. Had four kids and a wife at home. 
And I said, oh, Lord, we gone. Because I thought he was going to run his head on and uh, push that hood through that windshield. But Ray got her eye broke. I mean, cut up there. Joyce was in the back. She was 15. He had a, she was dipping snuff then. They throw her out of the back over where the dashboard was. She don't know what happened to that snuff, but she never took another dip of snuff. And, and, and when I got out the car, I got out the car, I had the snoring wheel in my hand. Now you tell me God ain't good. I mercy. I kept mercy. This morning I was having the Father, we come to me. Thanking thee and giving you praise. We praise you for watching over through this time. Father, we want to thank you for everything you have done. Father, bless us and keep us. Let us be mindful to get still in this time. May you praise us. And but most of all, we want to give you praise and thank for your darling son Jesus. Who hung out on the cross, that died and buried and rose that third day, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is my prayer in the name of Jesus, I pray, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you for that testimony. Amen and that prayer. All right. Why do we have another number before we move into our morning message? Let's continue to praise the Lord. His goodness and his mercy endure to all generations.
worship you. But those who worship you must worship you in spirit and worship you in truth. We give you all the glory, all the praise for the wonderful things that thou hast done for me. And now, Lord, if you allow the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, that they may be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. It is to you we give the glory and the praise. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. And amen. It's another day's journey. And I'm so glad about it. Our strength and our health are important to us. And so we give God all of the praise and the glory for the wonderful things in which he has done for us and the beautiful things that he is currently doing for us. There was a word in 1 Corinthians, Paul's first letter to the church at Corinth, four, verse one and verse two, records as thus, let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. And verse 2, Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. I believe that is repeatable. Verse 2, more. It is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Thank you, and you may you may take your seats. We want to talk about God's requirements of us. His requirements of us. It is required in stewards that we be found faithful. Now it is required that those who have been given a trust must prove to be faithful. Can I help somebody today? Amen. So my point is, what is it that God expects of us? I've learned that God's requirements are quite different from man's requirement. Number one, God requires holiness. Amen. I have somebody. Amen. I've not met too many men that that told me or even instructed me that you know I want you to be holy. If they got to ask you to be holy, help me somebody. If folk have to ask you to act like you are holy, then we got a problem. But God's requirements are that we be holy because our God is holy. God requires holiness where some men require selfishness, selfish gain. Everyone, all of us wants a blessing this morning. Amen. Amen. God requires us of us to be good stewards. Amen. I said good stewards. Over oh, the blessing that he has already supplied for us. Amen. But we cry out, I want more. I want more. I want more. Sort of, sort of like it is when you had an all-you-can-eat place. Look like that's the thing I'm going by now. <laughs> give me more, give me more, because simply there is more 
uh, on the serving table that there is in my plate, so give me more. Pile it up. I'm not eating what I've already gotten, but give me some more. Simply because it's there. But God is not an all-you-can-eat restaurant where you just eat and eat and eat to waste. Note here that God requires stewards to be trustworthy and, and faithful. And certainly, certainly he wants us to be successful, but not like the world sees success. I think about Paul in chapter 3 where he was responsible for planting the church at Corinth. And, and if you read that, uh, 3 and 6, where Paul said that I have, I have planted, I have planted and Apollos water. But thanks be to God, it was him who gave the increase. Can I help somebody? And so it's good that we know what our responsibilities and our requirements are. Paul said, I planted. He was responsible for planting the church at Corinth. And Apollos was responsible for, for watering it. But only God could give the increase. Amen. Only God could supply the growth. But I ask you a question. I ask you a question. We have all of us been blessed. But let me ask you this. Has God given you a gift? Has he ever given you a gift that you didn't do nothing with? You know it's so quiet. 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 But I know that you can be truthful to yourself. If you can't be truthful to anybody else, be, be, be truthful to yourself. That God has given many of us gifts that we didn't do anything with. We did nothing. God requires faithfulness. He requires of us to do something with what we have given. What we have been given. You can plant a seed in the ground. Paul can plant the church, the seed. But you can't make it grow. At least we can plant it. I've planted plenty of seeds that didn't come up before. Mm -hmm. Even after watering and fertilizing, it didn't do anything. But I've learned to be faithful down through the years. We must remember that we have some power but we don't have all power. Amen. Only God has all power. And we must realize that it's only through, through Christ that we can do all things. Did you hear me? Amen. God requires. Paul and all of us have been required to be faithful. God did not require him to be eloquent. He did not require him to be wise or charismatic. But he did require him to plant the church. Help me somebody. I'm reminded of the wonderful things that God has done for many of us. But yet we have forgotten that God has planted a seed in each of us. And this says to me that God does not always use the best qualified people to do his work. Help me somebody. But I am reminded that man's qualification and God's qualification are quite different. Because God can take a lad from a sheepfold and make him a king. Can I help somebody? 
You remember the story about the first Adam? God created him perfect. Then Adam's family. God created the first Adam perfect. Didn't he? Perfect and, and set him up in a perfect place. Didn't he do it? That man, Adam, had everything in the world at the tip of his fingers. God gave him the run of the God. All he had to do was take care. Huh? Where are you going, White? Be a good steward. Be faithful to God over the blessings that you have. Even if your place of residence looked like the Beverly Hills house that they left. Help it somebody. They were happy. They were happy. Even in a shack, they were happy. They were faithful people in their own way to what they had. All Adam had to do was just take care of the God. Be a blessing. Be a blessing. And let me say it like this. Be a blessing to your blessing. Be a blessing to your blessing. The blessing that God has given you, be faithful. Be a blessing to the blessing. If the blessing could talk back to you, what would it say? How would it say that you treated the blessing? All they had to do was take care of it. Amen. That's all. Just take care of it. Take care of it. Take care of it. But Adam soon discovered that everything that looks good is not necessarily good for you. Can I help somebody? And that's my point. And my second point is God expects us to meet the requirements. Yeah. He expects us not only to be faithful to the requirements, but to be but to meet the requirements. You have to qualify you all to be on this team. Can I get some witness? Yeah. In qualifying for being a faithful servant. Paul said that faithfulness, sometimes it looks like it's self-serving. But it ought to go. Our faithfulness ought to go in the category of what we did was pleasing to the Almighty God. We can miss a lot of things by not being faithful. So we say in verse 2, moreover, meaning in addition to what has been said. And what has been said, verse 1 said, let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries. But moreover, in addition to that, it is still required of stewards that a man be found faithful. So a steward must meet the requirements of being faithful. Fidelity is demanded and loyalty is a must. You didn't hear me. Fidelity is demanded, but loyalty is a must. Sadly to say, most people think that this is just another free ride. Hmm? We beg God sometime for all the good stuff. But when it comes time to share it, sometimes that's hard to find. Sometimes when it comes to even sharing the very blessing that God has blessed us with, we find ourselves in a position of giving God the leftovers. You didn't hear me. Let me say it this way. God does not want our leftovers. Why 
should we just give him what's left over? After going through the hundreds, huh? thousands, fifties, twenties, tens, five, then we're down to the Baptist dollar. That was what was left over. That, that was left over. After we've gone through the hundreds and the fifties and the twenties and the tens and even the f -f -f five. Here we are with the uh, the sanctified dollar. And the reason I call it the sanctified dollar is because we set it apart. Just to give God a dollar of what was left over. That's not faithfulness. That's not being a good student. Don't y'all turn me off. Keep me posted. Thank you, Lord. We can miss a lot of other things that God has in store for us by not being faithful. So we said, moreover, in addition to all that's been said, a steward must meet the requirements of being faithful. Fidelity is demanded. Loyalty is a must. And so we get our hearts and our minds in the right place. That before we get to the leftovers, God has already gotten the cream of the crop. Amen. His has already come off the top. Because we know that every good and perfect gift has come from above. Amen. My third point is, is just be who God wants you to be. That's what he's requiring. God reserves to himself the responsibility for bringing the growth if you be faithful of the increase that God has given you. If you meet the requirements, if you serve God right, if you bless God in the blessing that you have received, God will see to it that you receive the increase. Help me somebody. Now I know you can toot your horn, blow your horn, wave your hand, stop your feet, but I start talking about the increase because all of us want some increase. Help me somebody. We want to see an increase. Want to see an increase in our children. Amen. Hmm? Being faithful to God. Don't we? We want to see our grandchildren and our kindred and our, yeah, our relatives take an interest in the work and the service of the Lord. We want to see the increase. We want to see some growth in our church participation. In the loss being brought to salvation, we want to see an increase. Amen. I said amen. amen. When we get to work, we want to see an increase. Yeah, we, want the, we want the establishment to show some loyalty. Amen. Yeah. And not just us being loyal to them, amen. but they being loyal to us. Amen. amen. I said amen. amen. And when Friday comes, thank God for Friday. Can I get a witness? I said, thank God for Friday. I'm not, I, I'm not talking about the Friday evening, late one Friday evening. I'm talking about early one Friday morning. Thank God for Friday, because when Friday comes, we like to look at that piece of paper and see it increase. Can I help somebody? I know Jesus died on Friday. I know he did. 
I know we did, but there's another Friday that we think about too. And I know we ought to think about what he paid, the price he paid for us. He was faithful to go through what he did on that Friday. But we want to see increase. And just be who God wants you to be. If you could just do that, you'll see an increase in the blessing that God has bestowed upon you. Therefore, Paul simply tries to do what is right. And he refuses to spend his days in torture self-assessment. Yes, let's not waste any time. Church trying to be like someone else. Can I, can I help somebody? Paul said it like this. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 10, he said, I am that I am by the grace of God. Be all you can be, but more than all, be all God wants you to be. Don't measure yourself by other men's standards. Huh? Paul said in 2 Corinthians, for we dare not number ourselves or compare ourselves with someone else who commend themselves. For in marrying themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves, Paul said, they are not wise. You all going to help me close? God reserves to himself the responsibility for bringing the growth to our blessing. Our responsibilities are to stay qualified and be faithful on the job. Can I get a witness? All of us have work to do. Is that right? Yes. Yes. There is work to do. Is that right? God, oh God, has made us stewards. But he did not make us faithful stewards. He made us stewards. But he will not make us faithful. Can I get a witness? What are you saying, preacher? There is a part for us to do. The faithfulness is left for you and me. Yes. To be faithful is to be dedicated and devoted to the cause. Yes. The Bible calls us to be faithful to God and faithful followers of Jesus. To be faithful means to be full of faith and ready to be trusted. And I get a witness. Oh, you didn't hear me. I said to be faithful is to be faithful, full of faith and then ready to be trusted. Can he trust you? One of the characteristics of God's ethical nature. Can I get a witness? It denotes the firmness of constancy of God. It denotes that you are trying to please God and not one another. Can I help somebody? Somebody is an attribute applied in the scripture. It denotes for both men and God ought to be faithful. You didn't hear me now. I said man ought to be faithful because God is faithful. Man learns how to be faithful because God is a faithful God.
abundantly more than we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. To him be praise and glory in sport now and forevermore. God's people said amen. 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 amen.